Good morning. Good morning. Here we are live for our Growing Edge Sunday broadcast. Here each and every Sunday, I'm Allie Benjamin, and I welcome you. And I'm so happy to be connecting with our virtual community here on Facebook. And if you're watching the replay on YouTube, welcome wherever you are. Whether this is your first time joining us or you've, this is, you're coming back for more, I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad. Hey, Carol, there's Carol. And as you jump on, I'd love it if you would post in the comments where you are, where you're watching this from, and uh, maybe share a thought or two. This is about us as a community coming together, whether this is the one and only time we'll connect us as a community or you come back for more and more every week because every Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific time and 10 a.m. Mountain time, we get together to talk about life and how life got to be the way it is and how we can create an even more joyful, meaningful, fulfilling life. So I'm so glad that you're here. Hey, Ben, so good to see you. And I know Michael's here. I'm here in our Om Shanti home, our, our camper van that we've been living in for almost a year now. And today we're broadcasting live from Grass Valley, California, just in the Sierra, not just, in the Sierra foothills on the edge of Truckee and Tahoe and um, pretty close to family in Davis, California. And so we're here in the midst of this glorious um, mountain community that we've been calling home now for, for a month or so, maybe two months, I'm not sure. Anyway, so good to see you. Glad that you're jumping on. Hey, Holly and Carol, I'm imagining that there's Pam and Natalia and William and Cheryl. Hello and good morning. And for those of you that are new to this broadcast, we have um, many different communities that join us and individuals that aren't part of communities. So I'd like to say hi to our um, Ogden Satya Center. And there's Natalia, good morning. And we've been meeting in Ogden up until a couple of years ago every every Sunday for over 10, almost 11 years now. And so hello to all of our, our Northern Utah family. And then we've got people watching from Big Bear Lake, Southern California. And so hello to all of our BVCSE, the Bear Valley Center for Spiritual Enrichment friends. And then those that Michael and I have met along the way, we've got friends and family that join in. And we've had an amazing amount of people that have joined us over the last year and a half on Facebook. So we've got this mix of wonderful people from all over the place. And so welcome. So glad that you're here. We're going to get going now with our little song from Leslie. Free my mind. Open my heart with the whispers of truth to live to live a conscious life on the growing edge. On the growing edge. Om and Namaste. Ali Benjamin here, live from Grass Valley, California. And we broadcast live every Sunday, Growing Edge Live. And our message is about being on the very, having the awareness that we're on the very growing edge, leading edge, cutting edge of our own evolution. Once we wake up to what's going on in, in this amazing spiritual experience, spiritual beings having human experience, we begin to wake up to the fact that we create our own life. We are the masters of our own destiny. And so we, how we take mastership or ownership of our lives is by, by being consciously aware of every thought we're thinking, because our thoughts create our reality. 
And if we bend or lean more towards the negative, the critical, fear and worry, the idea that we're separate, then we have a challenging experience. Most of us are going to come into challenges throughout our life. It's part of, of this human experience. But if we lean more towards the positive, the hopeful, being creative and finding joy and looking for the good and praising it, we tend to move into a frequency of, of curiosity and creativity and we begin to take ownership or um, have greater mastery over our mind and so we live there on the very growing edge of our own becoming with a sense of I'm creating this I have a hand in this I may not be able to influence everything that happens but I do have an influence over how I respond to life and how I no longer react from a place of fear but come from a, a place of faith and love enjoy. So welcome. We here at Satya are all about healing hearts, transforming lives, and we really, really value and want to nurture conscious evolution. We know that there's a lot of crazy stuff going on around the world. We know that there's some crazy stuff going on in our own families, in our own households. So we want to wake up and live more consciously so we can have a positive impact on, our, on ourselves and on, on our lives, on our families and on our worlds. So our mission here is Satya is a creative ministry adapting to serve unique creative individuals and communities and supporting their, their spiritual awakening so that they, you, me, we, can be a beacon of light in our world and help elevate everything through our through our mindset and through our consciousness so thank you for being here today thank you for financially supporting us we um, survive solely on your donations and you can financially support us on Venmo Satya Center S-A-T-Y-A C-E-N-T-E-R and we are located in Ogden Utah so thank you again not only for your financial support even more important is your loving support your care and your care for humanity's well-being and we're all one there's only one life one power one presence and when we get this we realize that we're responsible for taking care of us ourselves our mind our heart first and then that just ripples out and that ripples out um, another just a <clears throat> reminder I have a wonderful um, course a class coming up May 6th everyone is invited the title of it is spiritual resilience and it's a journey into greater empowerment and liberation and freedom and we're going to journey through five stages of grief because all of us have have things that are unresolved feelings, emotions, traumas, losses that we've experienced, small losses, big traumas that we have maybe stuffed away that we've not wanted to look at because it's too painful and life's too busy and there's too much to be done and I have to go to work and I have to care for the kids and I have to fill in the blank. And so we don't give our self time and space to really look at what might be hindering our prosperity, our growth, our physical and mental well-being. And it could be that you have some unresolved grief due to loss and trauma and we all seem to cycle through this grief loop. And if you trace it back, if you trace back what you're grieving, what you're sad about, what you might hold anger about, what you might be questioning and confused about from the past, and, and we seem to all have this, but we, we don't do anything about it unless maybe we hear someone mention it. And then it's like, wow, really? Could that be holding me back from living my best life? I'm going to take that course. I'm going to take that spiritual resilience course and really look at this for the for uh, for maybe the second, third, tenth time and really get some resolve here. Really transmute that old energy and blossom. So join me. Um, email me. Text me. Message me, and I'll send you some information. So I'd like to start with a little grounding meditation, closing the outer eyes and turning within. And tuning in to that place within you. Maybe it's a, you can locate it in your heart center. That place that is always whole, complete, and perfect. Where you are in 
continuous, steady, consistent communion with the divine, communion with the universe. It's that part of you that has never been fearful, never felt lost, never felt betrayed or abandoned, never felt hungry. That place in you that is whole, complete, and perfect. I call this our divine spark, our soul. So let's tune into that now and feel the interrelatedness, interconnectedness with all of life. This is our moment on Sunday mornings to get together to remember what our hearts already know. That we're a part of something so much more. That yes, there's this busy life, there's this world of things happening, but there's a greater, more expansive dimension to our being that is that includes all of that, that includes all of time and space, but is greater than all of that. There is this dimension to our being that the center is everywhere and the circumference is nowhere. So we step into that now. We step into this broader, truer essence of who and what we are in truth our spiritual essence. And so breathe that in, breathe it in. And feel love expanding in your heart center, love and appreciation and exhale it out. Breathing in love and exhaling love. And as you continue to do that heart breath, that conscious connection between the mind and the heart, we allow the busy thinking mind to occupy our heart space and in that place, we honor ourselves, we honor all of life in that namaste, the divinity in me sees and recognizes and honors the divinity in you. And we come to that space of awareness. And when we're in that expanded place of awareness, we feel how precious our life is. And we begin to understand that this life is worth cherishing, valuing, giving our full attention to. And so just get a sense of that. Feel your feet rooted and grounded to Mother Earth Gaia. And feeling that love and appreciation as we draw so much from Mother Earth. We actually are made of this incredible physical stuff, these particles, these, these atoms and neurons and protons and all of the subatomic particles that go into making us into form. We are part of this grand universe that is all made up of the same components when you break it down. So we're giving thanks to Mother Earth Gaia. We're giving thanks to to the cosmos for being a part of this one experience that we're having and we feel deeply connected and rooted and grounded and open to what is right now. Giving thanks, breathing, connecting, gently opening your eyes and being fully present and, present and grounded in the here and now. Ah, so it is, namaste. To you, good morning. So my message today is a cherished life. I looked it up in the dictionary. What is cherished? What is cherishing? What does it mean to cherish? And it says, to cherish is to protect and care for somebody lovingly. To cherish is to hold something dear. To cherish is to keep a hope or an ambition in your mind. If you cherish a right, a privilege, or a principle, you regard it as important, and you try hard to keep a hope or ambition in one's mind. So you're getting a sense of, of what cherished and what to cherish means. So isn't your life precious? Isn't life in general precious when we slow down? when we stop, when we jump off that treadmill of trying to get things done, 
trying to maintain the persona, trying to acquire those things that our ego thinks we want in order to be happy, those, the way we think we need to look and be so we can get outside approval, so we can fit in, that, all of that is, is not cherishing ourselves. All of that is buying in to the viral programming that it, we're constantly bombarded with. We're here to cherish, to truly honor from a very deep spiritual awareness. When we occupy our spiritual identity, when we occupy that place within us that is so much more than the physical, and that's not to discount the amazingness, awesomeness of our physical body and our mind, but we have a third dimension, which is this invisible, timeless, spaceless dimension of our, our essence. And so we, when we bring all three of those, the body, the mind, and the spirit together, and we, we wake up in the middle of our lives, when we wake up right now in this moment, as we're listening to these words that are downloading through me right now, when we're listening to this higher truth, and when we begin to see that we get to wake up to what it means to live a cherished life, what gets in the way of that? What gets in the way of us staying wide awake amidst all the stuff and the BS, the belief systems that are occurring around us, when we get sucked into whatever it is, watching TV or the drama of our own lives or what's going on in a workplace or whatever it is, when we get sucked into all of that and we forget, we forget the importance of managing our energy, managing our our minds, managing our lives, we get fearful. We begin to think that we're separate. We begin to believe in the illusion of separation. I found this quote in the, uh, in, um, from Dr. Ernest Holmes. He says, fear is the great enemy of man. It is impossible for a person to do his best if he is filled with anxiety. Unless we live without fear today, we will dread tomorrow. Those who live in dread of tomorrow generally harbor memories of things that were unpleasant in their previous experience and expect that more of this unpleasantness will, will transpire in the future. The present day in which they live is robbed of all peace and joy. Yesterday is forever past. We cannot relive it, no matter how we may regret what happened yesterday, it is impossible actually to live it over again. But too often in imagination, we do live it over and over again. And in doing so, bring all the misery of yesterday into today. Learn to forget yesterday after we have gone over it and learned by our mistakes. The thing to do is to correct those mistakes and to forgive ourselves for anything we may have done. I love that. I love that. Dr. Ernest Holmes, what a great spiritual teacher and coach and inspirer of truth. We get to move beyond our fears, our, the memories of yesterday. Can we learn something from our past mistakes? Of course we can, because every breakdown is typically a breakthrough, and we can bring those pearls of of what happened in the past, all the things that we learned, all those treasures, when we, we begin to focus on what those gifts really were, and we let go of all of the self-loathing, the self-criticism, the blame, the shame, the guilt that exists when we imagine what happened in the past, or we, we, mem we bring that into our memory, and we just let it go and we begin to be more present, live more mindfully in the now moment. We begin to live a life of reverence, a life of, of true appreciation, not from the egoic level, not from this place of what's wrong, what's missing, but this place of what's right, what's here to celebrate. And we begin to start a real deep practice of, of I'm, I'm, taking a course right now where I'm really looking into being 
in this contemplative state of being, contemplating everything from a deeper awareness. Now, living in this, this place of, of contemplation is a place, it's a sort of a word or an energy or an entry point into living a life that is mindful. So I think of contemplation as being the, um, the sort of the umbrella. And then under that contemplative umbrella exists mindfulness, concentration, meditation. And we, we, if you're listening to this, you probably have a real rich practice of meditation, contemplation, concentration, mindfulness. These are all kind of buzzwords these days for, for what it means to live a spiritual life. For those of us that are waking up to, to consciously co-create our lives, we have a practice. We probably meditate and we probably, we are practicing mindfulness, which is being aware of our surroundings. We're being aware of how we emote, what we're feeling about what's going on outside of our lives and in our minds. So it's a more, it's an inner journey, but we're bringing the outside in and the inside out, and we're learning how to be mindful in that way and honor that others are doing the very best that they can with what they've learned about who they are, where they are on their evolutionary spiral of, of unfoldment. So we, we, many of us have practice of concentration. The, this would be yoga or focusing on a particular spiritual text and, and going really deep into that, concentrating on what's really meaningful and developing life enhancing and, and physical well-being practices that require laser concentration. And then there's meditation, which is when we just go into that place, that absolute place of non-resistance, and we simply watch the comings and goings of the mind, but we're not focusing on anything. We're, the, the, the object is to release everything and just be in a one-sided conversation with the universe where you're not doing any of the speaking, you're doing all of the listening. And so meditation is being tuned in to what is. And so as we wake up to our cherished life, we begin to contemplate all of these things. And contemplation requires a gentleness, a gentle approach to life, a gentle, curious approach to life in opposition to a know-it-all kind of mindset. Oh, I know that. I've already done that. I, I woke up when I was back in my 20s. I don't need a spiritual teacher. I don't need a spiritual reminder. There's that part of us that's the know-it-all. This contemplative, gentle, inquisitive, curious nature helps us to dive more deeply into living a cherished life, cherishing ourself, cherishing each other, not, not judging and wishing things were different, but just truly accepting this, this amazing gift we've all been given, this gift of life. And many of us have had losses and traumas and tragedies that have occurred where we feel, may have felt so victimized by life, so hurt. I know many of you know my my story, my past, there's been many things. Loss of a loved one, physical disability, divorce, financial um, hardships. There's, for many of us, we've dealt with these things and they've been extremely difficult. It seems that, that they linger. They linger and sort of get in the way of us truly saying, okay, I'm going to let go of my victimhood and I'm going to embrace life wholeheartedly and cherish it, even the traumas, even the hardships, the losses, even the, the disabilities, even those things. They're not things to overcome, they're things to embrace. 
They're, they're fuel for the fire of our own becoming. And when we really look at life th like that, when we embrace this now moment wholeheartedly with all of the past just as it was, knowing that it was completely for us, everything was for us, as hard as it's been. Everything came bearing gifts. And so when we, when we have that mindset, when we transcend out of victimhood and we are elevated into our sovereignty, that nothing needs to change in order for me to realize my sovereignty, my wholeness, my power, my creativity. Each one of us is primarily a creative being in a body, this spiritual essence that is supremely creative, primarily through our capacity to think, through our capacity to, to engage with life and the give and the take and the flow and, the, and you might experience it in your relationships. Our relationships are such a, um, a powerful tool or a, an avenue or a vehicle to, to realize to, to our growth, to, to have an opportunity to, to, to work through some of our egoic viral programming so we can become our sovereign, empowered, actualized spiritual essence in a human form. And so as we start to wake up to who we are in truth and what we are in truth and how we came to earth to serve, to bring our essence, our light into form, whether you do it through your vocation, through your career, through your family, through your hobbies, through just you living your life, you show people how to bring your spiritual wisdom into form. In, and, and every one of us is like an integral piece of the puzzle. We all are vital and needed in this, in this one human soup, in this soul journey. So what I want to leave you with today is to explore in your consciousness, explore in your life. Maybe go on a walk today, maybe go out into your garden, maybe, I don't know, read something, read a spiritual text with the awareness of cherishing awareness. Cherishing awareness is a dimension, it's, it's a faculty, it's a dimension of our being. We can activate this faculty of cherishing awareness where we transcend the bounds of our egoic structure, not to say it's not there, but we, we elevate to include it and lift it up so that we can have this cherishing awareness. We love life. We are at peace with everything and everyone. And we begin to take this like a, like a mother or a father energy. And we begin to cherish life from this broader awareness of oneness. And we begin to just give all of our nurturance, all of our care, all of our frequency, our spiritual energy, our, our compassion, our empathy just pours out of our body and our mind and our heart and every pore of our cell of our being. And, and we become this walking blessing when we have this, this notion this greater perspective that everything is here to be loved by us. Everything, everyone. Can you imagine if our planet was inhabited by beings that were awakened to cherishing awareness? What a blessing. We'd all be, we'd all get that notion that Ram Dass said that we're all just walking each other home. We're all walking each other home, meaning we're all on this path, we're all in this life, humanity, all sentient life, all of the, the creatures on this planet, all of the 
the trees and the plants and the minerals and everything. Earth, water, wind, fire, ether, space. We're all walking each other home, meaning we're all heading in the same direction. We're all on the same evolutionary spiral and we're all here to care for one another. And so it's my prayer for you that you wake up today more fully, more fully to your cherishing awareness, to loving awareness. So let's close with a prayer to activate this in our hearts and minds now. Closing the outer eyes and feeling a deep connection with all life, a deep sense of oneness, uh, transcending the bounds of the old paradigm. What you used to think you knew about who you were and what life was and open that up to include even more, to go a little bit further in the direction of what's possible. And as you open up right now, as we open up right now, as the collective humanity is opening right now like a beautiful lotus, opening up one petal at a time, opening up to receive the flood of light from the divine, from the universe, from God, receiving everything that allows us to open and release the beautiful fragrance of compassion, of love, of kindness, and experience that blossoming in the middle of your heart, that blossoming into cherishing awareness, into deep, heartfelt reverence for life, gratitude for all all that has occurred in the past, counting our blessings for all that we have right now, and knowing that we are the creative beings that co-create with the immense force of creativity that has been a constant throughout evolution, this invisible creative force, this spark of life, the ineffable blossoming of becoming more and more. It's God expressing itself as each and every one of us and we're tuning in, we're becoming consciously aware of our co-creative capacity to impact the world, to impact our lives, to manifest our dreams, our desires on who we want to be and how we want to be and how we're here to serve life. So just breathe that in, take it in, feel the gratitude bubbling up from your toes all the way out through your crown chakra, all the way out, raining down on you, feeling completely alive, vibrant, tingling with this frequency, this energy of cherishing awareness, love, compassion, energy, resilience, vibrancy, it's who you are, feel it, own it, be it, and then let's bless everything. Let's like send it out, Psh! send it out around the globe. A blessing for all sentient beings. May all sentient beings be awake to cherishing awareness today. So I feel this prayer, it is complete. It is absolutely done, it is so. And so it is. So peace and blessings to you. Thank you for, your, for being here today. We love you. If you would like a prayer partner, we have spiritual living, conscious living practitioners that are just waiting to sit with you on the phone or on Zoom to do a, a session with you to support you in, in waking up more fully to the life that you're here to create. And so let me know. Go to our website, satyalive.org, and let us know. You can find out more information on our website about spiritual resilience, on who we are. You can watch videos. You can go to our YouTube channel, Satya Center. We're here to support you 24-7. So peace and blessings. Love you, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.